Welcome back, man! Yeah! Our header's done. I've added our Jesse catalytic converter. I've added a flex and now it's ready. I'm ready to continue the rest of this exhaust. I've got this mocked up here. This bend and this flanges and this bend here, it's all just tacked welded together. Now, it's actually not tacked welded into this flex yet because I don't have this position where I want it yet. I wanna lift this up a bit. So before I continue with the mock up of the exhaust, I wanna make sure that my hangers up front are uh, gonna be hanging that part of the exhaust where it's gonna live because then I can continue and when I add to it behind it, it's not gonna um, depend on the final placement of this because I've already located that. So I'm gonna add a hanger here just below uh, this joint here. I need to add a hanger here, but I'm gonna do this one here first because this is a critical clearance area near this drive shaft. Uh, I will probably add another one further back, but that I can probably add after the rear axle. But I wanna, I wanna pull this up a little bit like that. So I've got not really a lot of options for hangers on this car because it is old and hanger designs have changed over the years. There's this option here, but I'm gonna actually take that off and redo it. Um, but I wanna add something in the middle here. So I'm gonna, I don't wanna weld to the body of the car. So I need to look for like bolt holes or bolts that I can make a bracket off of. And there's, there's two bolt holes here on this bushing here. So I'm gonna make a bracket that comes around and connects to both of those and then comes down and it's gonna connect with a, a rubber grommet and pull that up just slightly like that. So it gets a little bit better ground clearance here. But you can see when I move that up, it actually pulls the whole, whole front end of that section of the exhaust up a, just a little bit. And the reason it's able to do that is because of these these, uh, double, these slip joints, it still has a little bit of flexibility at that collector at the front. And those runners are really long, so it, them and themselves will have a little more flexibility compared to like a shorter runner. So I'm just gonna take a quick measurement for my bracket here, my center to center distance of my holes. So the way I'm measuring is, I'm measuring from the same side uh, to find the center to center distance. That's where I'm gonna drill my holes on my bracket, right? This is a manual hand bender. It's just a bit of a half inch stainless tubing that was lying around from another project. And uh, I wanna make that bracket so that it has a, a U shape. So it kinda goes around in the middle of that bushing uh, where between those two bolt holes, there's a little bit of a dip and I need to go around that. I could make the bracket out of flat plate, but it wouldn't be as strong as if I made it out of tubes. So tubing's a little bit gonna be a little bit more rigid. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of bending. Then I'm gonna take it out and just kinda eyeball where that's gonna, yeah, I'm gonna bend it a little bit more than 45, I think, because I want it to come further away from, from this bushing here. Arbor press. This uh, could also replace a shop press. If you have a shop press, you could use that. I've got a little V-block here. I've got a little triangle piece that I've cut. Uh, I've used this, obviously, you can see for quite a while, a number of years. And this is how I bend rods. You could bend, bend these hanger rods in a vise too. You could potentially use two uh, pieces of pipe that go over it and, and just bend it by hand or bend it over the corner of a table. Um, this is just a tool that I have, um, it's useful for this, so this is what I do. Um, now I've got this, you can see it's a little bit off center, I've got it centered a little bit, I've got it biased towards the end of my hanger here, that, and the reason for that is because I want to make this bend uh, a little bit closer to my stop here than uh, where the middle of my block is. I could potentially bend it there too, but try to bend smaller stuff in that, uh, in this V. It takes a little bit more effort because it is a smaller, you don't have as much advantage because your gap's not as big, right? And then when I bend stuff on the other side, that's where you have the most advantage because that gap's really big. So. And there's 
pretty close to 90 degrees. So I've just tack welded this uh, hanger rod onto my bracket. You can see it's, it's pointed slightly up toward the back of the car. And the reason for that is when this grommet's sitting on there, I want to make sure that, um, you know, if it's going to slide one way or the other, I want it to slide towards, towards our stop and not towards the end. And that's the reason I've done that that way. I've got all this piping mocked up to go over my axle back here. I've lined up where the, I want this pipe to, to be. I've got a little support here that's just holding the pipe here off of uh, our sway bar that's running underneath. I've checked all the clearances, I'm happy with that. So that orients this bend uh, pointing in the direction that I want it to be. So now I'm gonna tack weld my flex here. It's supported currently by our uh, zip ties helping us there. And then once that's tack welded in place, I can continue with this hanger here. And then I'm gonna move on to another hanger that I'm gonna start back there in a second. So I'll just tack weld this quick and then I can continue so with that guy you've there. You've got the positioning of this done first before you tack weld it. Yes. So it's really tight in here. If you, I wanna, I wanna run this piping. The piping that used to go through here was a lot smaller maybe two inches and three quarter, I, I'm not quite sure, but we're going to two and a half, so it's a lot tighter. So I wanna make sure that my clearance next to the diff here is, is important. I've got, you can see my little, just piece of scrap tubing sitting, holding my piping off of my sway bar here. And then if you look up in there, that area to the floor, I, I wanna make sure that there's enough clearance in there for this to move a little bit. And then also, on the exit side, because this is a 60 degree, 60 degree bend that goes over there, so I don't need to do any welding in there. I'm gonna probably cut this leg back a little bit, but I wanna make sure that I'm clear to this bolt and the, co the control arm, and then this part of the diff through here, and then on the inside up in here as well. I'm gonna tack weld this in uh, a few places around the tube here to the flex. At minimum three, if I can get four evenly spaced, um, that's probably better. But three should be enough to hold it in place. I'm gonna be disassembling this and welding it on the bench afterward. I wanna keep my grommet in a vertical position and then that's gonna come over here like that, right? Now that's where it's making its point of contact with the tubing there. I'm gonna probably push it up just a little bit because when this comes down, it's going to pull this grommet just slightly down a little bit. So that point of contact there, that's going to be my bend point. And I'm going to bend this part of the rod so that it, it's a, cl a closer match to the radius. I don't want to bend it straight. So I'm going to use a piece of round uh, bar stock to bend this. So I've marked my rod where I, that's where it's going to be. This is a piece of two and a half inch bar stock. That's where it's making contact on that exhaust pipe. So I wanna make a bend so that this curls around this bar here. But to do that, I'm gonna to have to bend it over here somewhere so that this is gonna draw up into the bar. I'm gonna say, and I wanna keep this basically level with my block. I'm just gonna support that when I bend it too. So it goes nice and straight. If you, you can kind of see the mark just ahead of that. If I bend that a little bit more, this is a little bit out. It's gotta come in just a... So that's where I want my, my bend to be. This is gonna be pointing slightly down because I want it to stay on on my grommet and I'm just going to mark where I'm going to cut the excess of this straight off take it over to the saw, cut that and then tack weld it in place and continue We're going straight pipe. 
We're not going straight pipe. <laughs> we are. We're gonna just just turn it down like that. And just <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Yeah, and we'll just cut this off here like that, slash cut that, and done. This side I only have tacked in place for now because I may have to adjust that once I put the weight of a, a muffler on uh, behind this. So I don't want to finalize that until I have this whole section all pieced together and have it carrying the weight of the, the full system. And then once it's done, I'm happy with where it's sitting, then I'll finish off all these welds. Cool. I really like this trick piece. So you bent that. A piece of flat bar, yeah. Weld, weld. And then this is an exhaust hanger. Yeah, so the, the hanger's just welded to the piece of flat bar. Mm -hmm. It's bent up and then it's bent, it sits over top and then the grommet connects the two. So when, once I have this all done, I'll, I will add another support piece on top of here that's gonna come up to, uh, to that rod there. So I've got the last bit of this exhaust all tacked together. It comes out over the uh, subframe down beside our diff and then our muffler's sitting uh, in the middle of our trunk area. And then our little tailpipe comes out and underneath the bumper there. I just got to pull this apart, weld it all together, put it back in the car and then see if I need to add maybe another hanger. I think it's going to be okay how it is. Uh, and then uh, it's all in art, Art's hands to see if you can get this car running and see how this exhaust sounds. I'm excited. This is like the factory setup of how it was. It just now it's two and a half inch instead of one inch or whatever it was. <laughs> so it's maybe an inch and three quarter. Yeah, inch and three quarter. Two so inch. the factory uh, muffler body actually sits here. So we use the universal six inch vibrant performance muffler in place of where the factory body normally goes. And uh, this one's stainless steel, won't rust like the old one did. Old one had tons of holes and made extra noises that I didn't want. And uh, yeah, looks much better now, much cleaner, and still retains the factory shape, but just beefier. The exhaust is completed, and I am super excited, super stoked. This is exactly the way I want it to look. It looks OEM, but it's beefier. So Aaron, high five. Make sure you check out Speed Academy's video. We're gonna throw up a link for you guys over here. See what they're up to. See if Jay's got his exhaust done. I'm sure theirs looks amazing. <laughs>